Hi, my name is Dr. Stephen Billings. I'm the co-director of the Dermatopathology section here at the Cleveland Clinic. Today we're going to talk about an interesting set of cases. We're going to talk about challenging spindle cell lesions of the skin. This is an area that causes a lot of pathologists and dermatopathologists diagnostic difficulty. We're going to do it on a case-based approach. I will show you some interesting cases and talk about the relevant uh, histologic features that will allow you to make the diagnosis. So we're going to start with the first case. The first case was a punch biopsy from the arm of an 11-year-old boy. And so what we have here is you can see this punch biopsy, this very cellular lesion that we see here. And as we go to higher power, we can see this, uh, this proliferation of spindle cells ranged in these somewhat irregular fascicles, really sort of percolating throughout the dermis. And you know, they, they show maybe a little bit of nuclear atypia, but they're not too much nuclear pleomorphism. There were frequent mitotic figures, and the presence of mitotic activity really caused a lot of concern for the referring pathologists. Now, if you look closely, you will see they have this somewhat irregular fascicular growth pattern, and you start to see there's a little bit of extravasated erythrocytes, a little bit of hemorrhage in here, and just very focally where the tumor cells are starting to fall apart a little bit. And here again, you can see that nice irregular fascicular uh, growth pattern, and uh, you could say it has al almost tissue culture-like growth pattern. And this is a case of dermal nodular fasciitis. Dermal nodular fasciitis is a, a tumor that causes a lot of diagnostic difficulty because this is not the normal location for nodular fasciitis. We usually think of, of nodular fasciitis as a more deeply uh, situated neoplasm as opposed to one that arises in the dermis. But uh, so not that uncommonly, at least we see on our consultation service, a fair number of cases of dermal nodular fasciitis every year. And this is a really good example of one. Here's another case uh, of a superficial case of nodular fasciitis. This one arose in the chin of a young woman. I believe she was 27 years old. And here we can see this rather large circumscribed lesion that, that sort of grows throughout the dermis and, and even extends into the, where the subcutis would be. And again, at higher power, this one is a little more classic for nodular fasciitis. We again see this irregular fascicular growth pattern and notice here this really prominent cystic breakdown where the tumor cells sort of fall apart. This is a really helpful and uh, diagnostic feature for nodular fasciitis and helps discriminate it from things in the differential diagnosis. So again, we have this same sort of bland spindled cells with this sort of open chromatin pattern and feathery elongated cytoplasmic processes and this nice areas of cystic breakdown. If we look elsewhere on this slide, we'll, we will also see, you know, maybe a little bit of hemorrhage, some extravasated erythrocytes that we can uh, highlight here at higher power. And this is, those are both very common features that we see in nodular fasciitis. And if you look at the periphery, in this case, notice it's relatively well circumscribed. Now, not all cases of nodular fasciitis are, are well circumscribed. Those that rise in the subcutis tend to be a little more uh, infiltrative, but those in the dermis are frequently well circumscribed. Now, there are two other entities in the differential diagnosis of nodular fasciitis that uh, we should talk about. The next one is uh, essentially a dermatofibroma, a, a cellular example of a dermatofibroma. And we mean, what we mean by cellular dermatofibroma or cellular fibrocystocytoma is one that tends to have a very monomorphous spindle cell population. It doesn't have all the multinucleated giant cells and siderophages that we often see in uh, conventional dermatofibromas. And if you look at this tumor, it is relatively well circumscribed, but notice at the periphery, it has a different growth pattern than what we see in nodular fasciitis. Notice how the tumor cells are wrapping around or trapping the reticular dermal collagen here. They just encircle the dermal collagen bundles of the periphery. And that is a very useful uh, diagnostic clue for this entity. Please notice here in the, in the middle though, we do have these rather uniform spindled cells arranged in fascicles. This is not the typical growth pattern of dermatofibromas. We usually think of them as a little more storiform, a little more variable, but these sort of fairly uniform spindled cells and fascicles are, are the characteristic feature of cellular fibrocystocytoma variant of dermatofibroma. It's important to recognize this variant because this uh, particular variant of dermatofibroma behaves slightly differently than conventional dermatofibroma. Um, it has a local recurrence rate of up to 20%, which is much higher than conventional dermatofibromas, 
which recur on the order of 5% of the time. Notice also in this tumor, it is infiltrating into the subcutis. Okay? And usually when people see this type of infiltration into the subcutis, they get very concerned for the possibility of dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, or DFSP. But I will show you a case of DFSP. They grow differently. They have different histologic features. But when we see cellular fibrocystocytoma infiltrating the subcutis, it does cause concern. But notice at low power, it's still relatively circumscribed. I mean, you can sort of draw a line around the limits of where this tumor involves the subcutis. So let's look at one more example of a cellular fibrocystocytoma. And this one is, is more challenging because it really is centered in the subcutis rather than the dermis. But we can see it down here as we go to higher power. Again, it's arranged in these fascicles. It is infiltrating into the fat, which again causes diagnostic concern for DFSP. But it's really not encircling lots of individual adipocytes like you see in DFSP. So that, that's a, a crucial difference in, in distinguishing those two tumors. Again, relatively well circumscribed at low power and not encircling individual adipocytes. One thing that also causes diagnostic confusion with cellular fibrocystocytomas is they are often concerned with the diagnosis, the differential diagnosis of DFSP. And one immunostain that is often useful in this situation is CD34. But it does come with a diagnostic pitfall. Here is a case of a cellular fibrocystocytoma stained with CD34. And notice at the periphery, there is really fairly intense staining. There's a lot of immunoreactive cells at the periphery. And that often causes confusion with DFSP, because DFSPs are strongly CD34 positive. But please note in the center of the tumor, the spindle cells themselves are actually negative, and all these positive structures here are little tiny capillaries. That's just the tumor vasculature. The tumor cells themselves are essentially negative for CD34 in the central portion of the tumor. So don't fall for that pitfall with uh, differentiating cellular fibrocystocytoma from DFSP. And so finally, uh, we'll talk about a couple different cases of DFSP to sort of illustrate the differences. So here's a case of DFSP. It has this nice store-form pattern of these spindled cells, very monotonous spindled cells in the dermis. And as you go to the periphery of it, notice it's not really entrapping or encircling the collagen bundles of the reticular dermis like we see in cellular fibrocystocytoma. Also, it doesn't have the cystic breakdown or significant hemorrhage like we saw in nodular fasciitis. And if you go to the deeper aspects of the tumor, you can see how it encircles and entraps lots of individual adipocytes. That so-called honeycomb pattern of fat infiltration is quite characteristic for DFSP. And you don't see that in, in nodular fasciitis, and, and you don't really see that in cellular fibrocystocytoma. And we'll finish off with uh, one last case uh, of another DFSP, just to sort of give you another uh, sense from a different case. Here we have, a, again, we have a slightly less cellular area and slightly more cellular area of this DFSP. And even in the, in the less cellular area of these very uniform, hyperchromatic, slender spindled cells, they're just diffusely infiltrating through the dermis here. They're not really encircling and entrapping the pre-existing collagen bundles like we saw in cellular fibrocystocytoma. And then again, as we go into the deeper aspect of the tumor, it really diffusely infiltrates through the fat and percolates through and around these adipocytes. This growth pattern is really quite typical of DFSP. And so if you recognize that, you really have a, it's a good clue to make this diagnosis. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found these cases interesting and we look forward to hearing from you.